liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Father in heaven, I come to you tonight with gratefulness in my heart, gratefulness for the provision of grace you've made possible for all of us in Christ, grateful for the challenge of this year, which is an occasion for us to draw near to you, and grateful for the opportunity which brings us together tonight, for these elected officials, for each department head and their staff, for every member of our city's public safety servants. Please protect our public safety members as they serve us. Give perceptive insight in the discussions which will take place here tonight. Give good judgment in the decisions which are made. Thank you for each person undertaking their role to serve us. And I thank you for your providence in placing them here. We long to see Allen Park be a great place to live and learn, to work and worship, and a great place to play. And may you grant grace in this meeting as a means to that end, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I was thinking to myself, I didn't see DBA on the agenda. I was like, there's, there's this other role. <laughs> well, I started even though we got the slack out of <laughs> 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 Doing double duty, <laughs> and he will now call the roll. <clears throat> Councilman Blevins here. Councilman Schlatt present. Councilman Valerius present. Councilman Syke here. Councilman Lloyd here. Pro Tem Lolly here. And Mayor McLeod here. We have a quorum. We have a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Motion. Motion by. Mr. Blevins, second. second by Mr. Valerius. Any corrections or changes? There's none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That has passed. And I have a motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting of October 13th. I'll make a motion. Mr. Lally. Second. second. <laughs> Sorry. Second Mr. Blevins. Are there any corrections? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Now we come to organizational business. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Provide a few updates for the uh, for your council and for the residents. Allen Road remains closed at Decourse Creek until approximately the end of the year, uh, while Wayne County replaces the bridge. Corby Energy continues to work on the 24,000, the DT 24,000 volt vault uh, issue, and Dan's Expedition continues to work on the bridge reconstruction. Um, I'm being, hopefully, being optimistic that the end of the year will be the timeline. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that, and uh, also that they will continue to be able to put in a two-lane access for us. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed on that. I'm, it's, Wayne, it's Wayne County, so. Uh, for the street improvement millage, GV Cement is the contractor in that. Uh, for Meyer Avenue, GV is pouring the north side of Meyer Avenue between Quant and Allen Road today. They'll finish that. Uh, there's a section they'll finish tomorrow, but they, they got about two-thirds of the way through. So they'll finish that in the morning. Uh, the new pavement, sidewalks, and approaches are complete on the south side of the street from Arno to Varans, uh, just short, about the alleyway, I guess it is. Um, we didn't want to get into the Varans area just yet with the sidewalks, so, so those will be coming up here uh, after the uh, Halloween time frame. Um, the north side of the street between Quint and Arno has been installed, but the sidewalks and approaches have not. Uh, restoration should start uh, shortly on that and the entire project once they get all the concrete poured. And the Bocelli inspectors uh, will be working with uh, GV to make sure the construction zone is made safe for Halloween, uh, including some barricades being put up where uh, sidewalks have been removed, stone has been, in, been put in. So they'll, they'll try to make it as safe as possible. Um, when I talked to Danny, who is the uh, inspector on, the, on that project, he was going to work with GV towards the uh, end of this week to get any miscellaneous pipes and so forth moved out of the way, uh, out of the easements, so they could be um, safe for the for the uh, little ones to go out if they choose to go out. I get involved in that issue as well. So, uh, but we'll do everything we can to make it safe for them if they do choose to go out. Uh, street section, I don't have anything much to report on that as uh, Savoni, the contractor for that project, is uh, actually doing utility work repairs right now. 
I know they were over on Champaign um, doing some repairs and, and throughout the city they're making those repairs uh, as they get ready for the, the season of change. Want to get all those buttoned up. Those are water main breaks, sewer uh, rebuilds, and I don't, uh, projects like that. So he's been busy on that, uh, those aspects. For the DPS facility project, uh, weather has been a factor and it slowed progress on the building a little bit. I did send out some pictures uh, for everybody last, uh, yesterday afternoon, I believe. Um, it is a pretty mammoth building when you start looking at it, and uh, it's, but it is coming along. Uh, GV will return this week to pour the remaining uh, road necessary. I'm not uh, to erect the salt dome. I'm not too sure they're going to get the entire road or a portion of that we need to get to facilitate the construction of the salt dome, but we'll be able to get the salt dome in. Uh, that is uh, set to be delivered the second week in November. And then GV subcontractor Bohr Brothers will be getting boring within two weeks, and that is for the water main, and I believe they're going to be boring the sanitary sewer line. Both of those are coming from uh, across the creek. Uh, there's an area between the railroad tracks um, and the creek that they have to get under, and uh, so they'll be boring that. Uh, they had to go in through and clear that. I mentioned that the last time. They had to clear that property of a lot of trees and debris to get their equipment ready to go. Um, the steel frame of the building is now up, and Wolverine uh, Steel is now putting insulation and roof on the building, as I sent those pictures yesterday. The roof should be completed by the middle of next week, and the siding framing should start uh, be started about the uh, week of November 9th. Um, I want to thank Bob Kitty. He helps get these uh, reports. He's the one, again, he's on site almost every day, uh, making sure everything is moving in the right direction, and so far that has been the case uh, outside the weather. Uh, City of Allen Park did receive a, uh, some good news here for the Allen Park Police Department. Uh, the Police Department was awarded a 2020 Bulletproof uh, Vest Partnership Grant from the Bureau of Justice Assistance. The award was for $7,182 and to be used to purchase a National Institute of Justice compliant armored vest. Uh, Allen Park was one of nine downriver communities to get uh, funded hmm. through this grant. Um, when I did the, going through quickly, I think we were, we were in the middle of the pack, I, or maybe fourth, I guess it was, in, in the amounts. I think uh, Woodhaven may have snagged us by a couple bucks, and I think Taylor may have as well, but still nice to get $7,000 to help for a necessity uh, such as the bull Bulletproof Vest. Um, uh, we had Shred Day on Saturday at the uh, Allen Park Public Library. Uh, we had over 160 cars, and we uh, that came through, made the dropped off their materials and then we had donations from uh, from various uh, people coming through there as well for the animal shelter and uh, so we, we put those in the van those were delivered to the animal shelter today along with two hundred twenty six dollars um, it's the first time we've actually done anything I know that we talked uh, with Councilman Valerius about doing this um, last year you recall uh, we partnered with Zeo Credit Union and did the uh, collection back here at the community center and they raised uh, did a fundraiser for fish and loaves. And I think they had over 400 pounds of food delivered to them from the, uh, from the residents of Allen Park and so forth. So I was very happy with this. Um, we'll, we'll get the word out a little bit better next time and uh, make sure that everybody knows. The, what we seem to find out is it, it'd be better if we can schedule this out months, months, months in advance and preferably two times a year. So we'll be working on that to see if we can get a contractor. It's not easy to find a contractor willing to do the shred day. Um, this one is paid for by Advanced Disposal, our trash collector, um, because they work hand in hand with this company on a lot of other issues around the, uh, the, the region. Um, I talked to the contractor about doing a second one that we would pay for. They're hesitant to do it because they've had issues in the past with these collection days where people are negligent and put batteries in their shred. Mm. And if you can imagine, batteries Excellent. and paper are a bad combination when you compact them into a certain area or, or you're crushing them through a crusher. Or a shredder, so it's bad, just bad combination. Uh, apparently, those things catch fire, and and they go up pretty good. And uh, so they they kind of uh, shy away from doing those unless they're kind of in a contract with somebody. Uh, we'll keep looking, and we have a, a company that does collection for us here at City Hall. We'll see if they can be uh, one of those that could do an off day as well for us, because I think it would be really helpful for a spring and a fall event. Um, now, the people were asking, what are we looking at for next fall? I don't know yet. I have to go back and look at the Michigan football schedule. I'm being honest. We, that's how we judge things. It just happened to be Michigan State was playing that day. We were getting some updates as people were coming in for the game too. But we had a good time. Um, we did. Uh, there was a couple of people that came through. They had some Michigan State green on. They did not. Were not able to make their their paper contributions. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, it wasn't going to go there. So. 
<laughs> but thank you to the residents for the for the contributions and, and the, the donations and the, and the financial contributions. We have uh, talked to uh, uh, Barbara uh, Rickwalder from DT. Uh, she informed us of a project that's going to be starting up here in January, lasting probably until May June of uh, 2021, and that's uh, DT will be doing a uh, exchanging out about 1,944. Just a, a, a round number right there, 1944 gas meters. Um, and they're going to be moving those from the outside of the house to the inside. I'm sorry. They're going to oh. be moving from the inside to the outside. That's right. Um, the project area is pretty pretty big. It's, it's Champaign Road to Goddard and Pelham to the city of uh, border with Allen Park and Lincoln Park. So there's the, the south, mid-south end. Um, that project, again, again, will start in January. That will go through May. Uh, through May, June of uh, 2021. We ask that they uh, notify the entire area that's gonna be affected by this project. Uh, typically, they will just notify Councilman Lolly. His, his meter needs to be replaced. I'm gonna, we'll, we'll notify Mr. Lolly. The problem with that is his meter uh, service line might be across the street. So they now have to go across the street and disturb that neighbor's front yard or uh, easement. They don't know anything about it. They see work going on. They're kind of, you know, they're calling, they're calling us. So we want to make sure everybody's aware of this. So we've asked that they could notify everybody in the area would be perfect. If they can make sure they give us that information, we'll post it on our Facebook page, post it on the website, get it on the police page, the fire page, recreation, library. We'll get the word out there so people know what's going on. And that, because they will call. We get calls numerous. Why are there, uh, you know, Miss Dig line, uh, you know, flags in my front yard? We don't always know. We'll know that this is project's going on, but, uh, um, and they're gonna also have a, a direct number to their Coolidge station that is in charge of this project. It is not gonna be an 800 number where you have to go through five prompts to get to this area. It's gonna be right to their Coolidge station, uh, which is the lead, lead for this project up in uh, Detroit. For Friday, November 20th, we've got, we talked about this at the last council meeting, and this is for the Lighted Christmas Parade. Uh, at 6 o'clock, we're going to be doing the tree lighting ceremony at the Historical Museum. And then at 6.30 will be the lighted Christmas parade. This will be going down Park Avenue. The starting point this year is, uh, has changed. It'll be Leslie and Park. Uh, we can visit uh, Councilman Lally. He's going to have hot chocolate. <laughs> uh, we'll, be, we'll be lining up in front, of, uh, in front of the houses there from Wick to Leslie on Park Avenue. And then we'll proceed down Park Avenue to Philomene. Uh, we'll cross Allen Road and we'll end up in at the uh, at the showmobile uh, in the parking lot of the community center. Um, so I think uh, we're talking to Rob and to, to Kyle and to Pat. Um, I, I think there's a way we can get everybody up on the stage, kind of keep you socially distanced, have the mayor present the, the key to the city to, to Santa Claus, and uh, that'll be the event. Again, this is not an indoor event this time around. This is uh, strictly going to be an outdoor event, and we want to do as minimal as possible of, uh, we don't want to encourage too many gathering at, at one location. Um, and then finally, uh, City Hall closings for the upcoming holidays. Uh, the Wednesday after the next council meeting will be closed. Wednesday, November 11th will be closed for Veterans Day. We're also going to be closed on Thursday and Friday, the 26th, 27th of, of November for Thanksgiving. Uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, the 24th, 25th of December, and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, the, first, the 31st and the 1st of January. Um, I did check and... Uh, the council meeting is on the 22nd of that week, and it is also on the uh, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I don't think that one's an issue, um, but if you're going to do anything on Christmas and you want to move that one to the week before, I, I would need to know, Mike would need to know ahead of time so we can get that posted. But it, it is scheduled for the 22nd. Yes. Any
name is Tom Rebel. Uh, watch car live on Ray. Uh, does anybody pay any attention to the cable TV on WOW and Comcast? Does anybody watch or does anybody listen to it? Because every time I watch it, basically the pictures are, are foggy. Besides that, the volume is extremely high. And uh, basically, and I just wonder if there's anybody that ever watches it to pay any attention. And it seems like basically nobody wants to speak into their mics to see uh, what is going on because half the time you can't hear that. And I know now it's more difficult seeing that we got to be bandits now <laughs> on this and that. So basically that's the situation there wise and that. And uh, if that can be taken care of and that. Is there anybody here tonight that I could speak to about how these new water meters work? And because uh, <laughs> all I do is I got a sheet here that has 7,000 numbers on it. And uh, basically, like at one time, it used to tell us that you know, how many cubic feet or whatever yards of water we would use. Now all we get is numbers. I guess we're in the numbers racket now, I guess, too. And that. So that's the only thing there, wise that I've got to say. Goes with the mask. Um, I know that the, uh, just to address the cable TV, I know that. Um, I, I don't watch the news on there, but they have some of the same feedback. The suggestion would be that if you have a computer, uh, I'm illiterate. Well, um, the, a really good option is on the city's website. These meetings are, when they're recorded, they are on YouTube, and you can watch them any time of day, and the sound quality is much And uh, uh, one other time I complained about it, and this and that, and, I, and somebody gave me a telephone number, and I called the gentleman up on WOW, because I have WOW. And they called me, he says, how'd you get this number? <laughs> <laughs> and so I spoke to him and this and that, basically what was going on, because the city said it was WOW, and WOW said it was the city, I was going back and forth. Huh. So I can't remember if it was that, that day or a day or so later, he called me back up, and he says, turn on your government channel. So I says, they're not televising. He says, yes, they are. So I turned it on, and uh, perfect volume. I didn't have to adjust my TV or anything. That was the time when we had to turn our volume maximum to hear you, hear you whispering. And then that basically, so that was taken care of. But that was when we were in the old, old city hall, basically, in this and that. And uh, so I, I, it just, just that sometimes you want to hear or you want to see, and the people aren't focused in right. Even with this camera here, the people are here wise, you can't even see them that clear. Dude. Especially when they have these uh, doorbells, you get a better picture than what you're showing on, on TV. <laughs> so that's what I got to say. Well, thank, you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking waiting until after the meeting, Mr. Murray will be happy to help me. <laughs> He's smiling at me. He's not standing there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also to address the other issue, uh, the, qual the cameras and that. So uh, our, our person that handles this is uh, Jim Gross in the clerk's office. Uh, he actually had a gentleman in a couple days ago, uh, maybe about a week ago, I guess it was, uh, walking through looking at the different equipment. And uh, Jim is a little busy right now with the election. Hmm. I, I know I'm very shocked, right? <laughs> He's in there right now. He's, uh, he still in there, right? Yeah. So they're still entering today's, uh, today's drop off. Um, but after the uh, election, we're gonna sit down with the uh, gentleman kind of figure out what we need camera wise because uh, apparently they can make us look better. They can make us look younger and thinner. Oh, and, oh and, God. Um, all for that, so, uh, but yeah, so, so Jim is already working on that. We, we know, we, we, we have recognized that is actually in the capital improvements for there's money set aside in the capital improvements to change out the cameras and uh, work on the microphones and that. Now there, there's always been an issue and this is not just an Allen Park issue. This is everywhere I've been issue um, with the sound quality coming from WOW and from Comcast. Um, and that's something that we cannot really control. That's, that's left to them and working with the, uh, the equipment. But we'll do the best we can to get the best quality picture and the best quality sound we can to send to them. Do, do we have, are all of these cameras currently functioning? Are, are all of them in, in current? Uh, no. Just that one. Uh, I think it's just the one in the back and this one right here. The one in the Actually, way in the back. Yeah. It's just one right now. One's not functioning. I think this one. And then because Matt's not here, he's not switching it back and forth. Gotcha. So 
So we took these from the old building. So yes. Oh, actually, the old, old building. Yeah. <laughs> We're extremely frugal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the technology, I think, is there to probably replace these sure. with the sound. I think uh, it's a lot, a lot, not a lot of money comparable to what it was. And the gentleman's absolutely right. Yeah. We, we have you know, cameras at our old. houses and our, our rings and stuff like that that are much better quality than this ever The was. ones that are in all of our pockets, probably. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Through the chair, um, we have gone back and forth with the cable companies, both of them, and the proof's in the pudding for us. When we place it on YouTube, it's perfectly fine. So we know, now I don't speak for the picture quality, but the sound, it, it picks up whether they're close or not. Why it doesn't work that well, I don't know, but hopefully we'll find out. So. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We do have a resolution. Resolution one. We have the city of Allen Park electronic meeting policy and procedures. This item here is uh, involving the uh, changes that were made by the state of Michigan uh, legislature. Um, as you recall, the governor's orders were obviously found to be uh, null and void, and or, I might have the right terminology there, but basically null and void. Sure. Um, so the legislature went back and, and approved that we could do um, Zoom type meetings, electronic meetings, um, and that goes back to, I believe it was March 18th, so we were covered. I was very concerned about that, and it was kind of take the Joe immediately with the concern of what happens with everything we've already approved. Do we need to come back in and do uh, one big agreement or not? No, not, no need for everything taken care of. The thing that they did do is they approved to allow us to meet until the end of the year with, uh, with uh, under the emergency, uh, under emergency declaration. Uh, once we get to January 1st, then you will have to have a, re a, a reason to meet. Um, you, the whole body will not be able to meet, but if you have a medical condition or you're in the service and out, out, of, uh, the, out of the country or out of, uh, unavailable to attend, which I believe there's a councilman in Livonia that is in the Middle East right now. Um, they'll be able to do that for the, for the next, for the year of 2021. After that, I think it's all up in the air to what's gonna happen at that point in time. So this, this just kind of uh, spells out, it was still in a draft format because we were still uh, trying to go through and understand some issues coming out of Lansing. I wanted to get it on the agenda with uh, working with Joe, we wanted to get it on the agenda for you and, and, and still be able to make those changes as we, as we came along. And uh, so the big main issue we were still running into was the um, two-way communication and who, who had to be able to hear and so forth and make sure it was meant for public participants. It, it, it said public body a lot. It, it gets very confusing. I'm, I know you're shocked when I say confusing legislature <laughs> approval, it's, but it was. So we did, I think, the best we could to get there. We've uh, um, siphoned this from a couple different communities and then Joe has been on his listserv, I was on my listserv making sure that we caught every, uh, some of the aspects to make sure we were on, on board with everything. And uh, we feel pretty comfortable with the changes that we sent to you yesterday, which were for the, uh, and so the public participa participants can be heard during their four minute public comment period was added. I think everything else was the same as what you had seen from Friday's uh, email, the, the delivery of the packet, so. I should go back and I say in 2021 also, State or local emergency disaster is also one of the other criteria too. I apologize. I have a motion to approve the resolution to adopt the uh, city of Allen Park electronic meeting policy and procedures. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lloyd. Second by Mr. Valerio. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Approximately 41,000 square feet of the Thunderbolt Lane parking lot. 
The ASI paving for an approximate amount of $95,000 with funding for this project from account 592-601-930-000. I'll make the motion, Mayor. Thank you. Second by Mr. Valerici. Second motion by Mr. Lowers. Any comments or questions? I just want to go to the record to make sure to clarify that the city's exposure on this is probably around approximately $71,000, $72,000, asking for $95,000 because the, uh, wouldn't, her, her check goes to uh, be paid to um, Dan's excavating for the sanitary sewer line work. There will be credits back and forth on that. So I just want to make sure we acknowledge that the payment to ASA is going to be approximately $95,000. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Very much. All in favor, say aye. 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 Resolution for the Allen Park Police Department to purchase Tower DMS at the cost of $6,618.69. Further resolve that the funding and yearly recurring cost of $6,618.69 for 50 users be for the purchase with funds from account 1013059350. Have a motion. Motion. A second. By Mr. Lloyd. Second by Mr. Lowry. With those <laughs> masks. <laughs> those masks, that's what happens. Okay, are there any questions or comments? We have very extensive cover memo regarding the purchase and I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Is this the the package that you would really, really want, or is this what you're settling for? It is the package I really want. Um, we did look at settling for um, not their premium package, but we, um, Mr. Blackman, the um, the sales rep, did negotiate with me, so we cut the price almost down in half. So we are able to get what we wanted. Um, this doesn't offer everything that some other packages does, but I do think it offers more than what they, the other ones do. Um, and it suits us where we're at in our department right now and trying to get off the ground. So it makes more sense. It, it's the one that I would pick first, so. Okay. And so just, just uh, the idea is here, Chief, is that this will be something that will be available to our officers in the field so that they'll be able to reference policies like on the go as we're actively like in a situation if they need to like look at that. This It also covers training too, is that correct? It, it does. It covers quite a bit. Um, three months ago today, you guys swore me in and uh, we rolled up our sleeves right away and this is one of our big goals that we wanted to accomplish is try to get our department accredited. Uh, we have a great department with great officers we want to elevate it and elevate that that excellence and that professionalism and accreditation is i think the best way to do that so through the michigan chiefs of police um, there's 108 policies and 250 standards you have to meet to get accredited this is the platform to help us get there so um, for instance we're um, we're waiting for our body and car cameras to come in we need a policy on body and car cameras um, things like that so um, what we've managed to do in the, night, in the first three months is we have an office, we have a desk, we have a computer, and now we needed a board. So our accreditation managers are gonna be Lieutenant Mihal and Detective Sergeant Doberton. Um, we have Sergeant Jablonski and our Administrative Sergeant Feltz helping, and then three officers, um, Officer Moore, Officer Nielsen, and Officer Arnaldi, who's gonna be our board to work with the accreditation managers, because it is a monumental task to get this done. Um, accreditation managers went to a conference where we saw Dearborn get their accreditation, uh, Ferndale, Kalamazoo. Um, so we were able to speak to them. All of them recommended Power DMS. So not only is it a, 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 a software package that you can build policies, but then you can test officers, you can train, you can upload videos. You, um, for every policy you have, you have to have a proof that shows you're following that policy. So for instance, the, the state mandate or government mandate now is um, bias training every three years. We did it two years ago. So our training manual should say, we'll have bias policy training next year. The proof would be the roster and what we're covering. So all that is in that one spot. So if 
if um, Officer Lloyd, we would pull up you and we'd have all your training, all your accommodations, all your issues, all, all, everything resolved. And um, it gives that one, we can pull up on your phone, you can pull up on a computer. Um, so it, it does, it streamlines it. Um, and a lot of those policies we would share with the public um, for transparency. So we're getting the full platform and it does a lot more as, as well. We can upload lots of different things. So it's one, one application that digitized. The, their big selling point of why they started was they say they've already saved 100,000 trees, an average cost of $11,000 in paper costs, just because most places you have binders and binders of things. This all puts it digitized. Um, the one around us besides Dearborn that's got it is Wyandotte, and um, the, the chief and the deputy chief there sent me their policy, one file, and I was able to go through, and if I want to click on foot for two trace, boom, it comes right up. I can see it on my phone, on my computer, I could show the residents. Um, so to me, it really makes sense as this is where we start and build from here. Awesome. Cool. Very good. I like it. Anybody else have a question? I would just like to make a comment if I could, Mayor. Um, so I just I just want to say th thank you, Chief. Um, I think that uh, I, I'm I'm very excited about this because um, obviously the last you know five or six months we've had a, a pretty a pretty big national discussion about policing, and I think that this is showing that that our department is moving um, that that we are that we are moving in the right direction, that we are being that to be a um, reactive to the needs of our of our people. Uh, we're, we're we're working to be transparent about everything, and I think that this is. Um, the Allen Park Police Department is, is going to be a, a model of, of what um, community policing can be, and I just commend you and, uh, and your department for, for taking these steps. Thank you. I'm, I'm an, um, anxious to show the public that we're doing the right thing, and, and uh, this helps do that as well, as along with our in-car cameras and things like that. So, I see a lot of improvements, very much. Doing a good job. very apparent when we had the march through here and uh, anytime it happens to come up in the 12th district conference calls of leadership on monday um uh, mrs jingle always references allen park mm. on that day of the march um and feels that we set the standard for how we handled the march and how we participated and how it all went and so uh, we just want to make a good thing better Absolutely. Yeah, and I appreciate Mayor and Council coming to the cop on the blocks. We have one tomorrow at uh, Niver and Leslie, and um, we're, we're hiring. We're in the process right now doing backgrounds. We have some very good candidates, so we're continuing to move forward. But obviously, that's our goal, to be as transparent as possible. Most, our office doesn't mind. We'll make it. <laughs> uh, Primo's is donating pizza, so you can have some soggy pizza, I guess, if it rains. But <laughs> if there's no further questions, can I have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sole source provider for this product at a cost of $63,670. Funds from account 592-603-98500. And Mr. Murray is going to tell us all about it. Sure. Want to get it educated in pumps. Uh, this is for our retention basin. We have five of those pumps there. Um, we've replaced three in the last three years because the other two that we have left are almost 18 years old. We've rebuilt Every one of the older pumps, not the three new ones we have, twice at $30,000 they cost to rebuild. Mm. We're at the point of you need to replace. It's not cost effective to continue doing such. And some of the rebuilds is only in the last two years. So I, with the pump station you have given us authority to have rebuilt, we always overestimate that just to give anyone an idea where the money comes from. And just in case that the pump station comes in that high, we have that to handle it in the budget. What's left over usually was what we're purchasing these pumps with. That's how we've done it every other year. Um, it's vital. You have five pumps there, four have to run on a rain event. The fifth is always just an in case. Um, if they don't run, we obviously know what happens to that. 
if it isn't a rainstorm, the way our system is worked, 80% of our system goes to that retention basin. It has to then be pumped through the pumps out of the city to go down to Dua. We don't have a system that just automatically gravity goes all the way to Dua. So these pumps are vital on an every day, seven days a week, 365 a year. So I feel this is a very important purchase that we have to keep up on for our residents to make sure they're all maintained. Can I, before we do that, further discussion? Can I have a motion, please? Oh, wait, I had something to, oh. Motion mm -hmm. first, never mind. Yeah. Have I have a long day. Uh, long day, <laughs> long day. <laughs> motion. motion. Second. I have a comment just in general to Tom, to you and your men. I know that you provide a vital service to the city and the residents. And I'm very proud that you take uh, maintenance and your job very seriously, you and your men and women, and that you take and schedule this maintenance and keep on top of everything because um, look at the infrastructure you have to maintain. And it's vital to everybody's daily life to have the ability to get water, the ability to go to the restroom, you know, those are things that uh, are very important. And I think of your service and the service of your employees is very vital to this and you do a wonderful job. Thank you. And I think this is very important that we take in and to have a maintenance schedule. So that's what I wanted. I would like to, one other item. They are $75,000 is what we've paid. We had a problem a couple of years ago with two of the new pumps we ended up paying $19,000 to get one repaired. It was only a month old. We fought with them. They have concluded that yes, they had a quality issue from the manufacturer. Mm. So this pump is at that price due to the credit we worked out with them uh -huh. in the future purchases. Mm. The very next pump, the fifth one I'm talking about, will have the same pricing. Just Thank so you're you. aware, we, we do our job diligently, as you yeah. said, Ms. Sike, to um, make sure everything is handled correctly. Theoretically, are these pumps running right now with the rain that we have going on? Well, if we have rain, there's probably two. If I pull it up on my app on my phone right now, I could show you there's mm. two probably because it's light rain. Yeah. Um, yes. And if when we get rain, what happens in a retention basin, it's a little class here, is yeah. it goes into a storage tank we have. That's what retention basin means. Mm -hmm. So we pump only the amount we're contracted with DUA to be able to pump to them. When we get a lot of rain, we cannot pump more to DUA. We have mm. a contract, and that system doesn't allow that. That is why we have, it's a 10 million gallon tank over there. It will hold up to 10 million gallons in a heavy rainstorm. Then when the rain subsides and Dua can handle it, we release it to Dua later at a drier day. That is what that station is intended to do. Hmm. So when a second pump comes on, or any more, they go into that retention basin. They do not go down the line. Hmm. Just Does the it one. pump pretty fast? Or? They're 75 horsepower. I think um, just to kind of piggyback on what Councilwoman Sykes said, is that um, having been here now for almost five years, um, I think what we were doing with preventive maintenance and infrastructure and making sure that we're taking care of our equipment um, and, and doing things in a timely manner and planning ahead uh, bodes very well for this city. Um, rather than finding ourselves in panic situations and in deep dark holes with failing equipment and structures. And it reinforces the fact that yes, our, we've had this conversation, our pump stations work. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as you say, we have five in this station, four function, one is in reserve. Yes. Uh, and so, um, and, and uh, at some point when we're back to full service council meetings, I think I've mentioned this before, one of the things I intend to do is bring in various departments and have them talk about their departments and what they do because I think it's very important for not only the residents, but for all of us to have a better, deeper understanding of what is involved in all your daily work. Because I, I will tell you this, uh, you keep peeling away at that layer after layer and I'm still learning things. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments, questions? Mm. If not, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That has carried. Now we come to council comments. And I gave a heads up. Councilwoman Syke is first this evening. Yes, I don't, I don't have much to say tonight, but uh, uh, look out uh, 
for the little uh, trick-or-treaters coming up. And um, I hope you're having a safe Halloween. And uh, that's basically all I have to say today. Thank you very much. Mr. Valerius. Uh, it's good to be back. Sorry, I missed the last meeting. No. Uh, I, w I did enjoy a, a well-needed trip up to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, so that's where I was at. And uh, Happy to report so far. I'm still happy to be back face-to-face -face instruction with my kids at school. Uh, some sense of normalcy in some crazy times. So, uh, But I am. Uh, my wife is now 100% virtual at home with her school and her district, so she's at home with our dog and uh, my son taking online classes while I'm going to work every day uh, to my school. But I'm enjoying it. Uh, as Pam mentioned, you know, my hope and uh, prayers go out to all the uh, people who are, you know, the kids and everything else. It's definitely going to be different Halloween, uh, but hopefully they have a time to practice safely and enjoy it in a safe way because uh, I think they need that. Uh, I just ask everyone to keep uh, all the city workers, uh, all our, my fellow council, uh, men and women, uh, in your prayers and thoughts. Uh, remain diligent in what we need to do uh, with numbers rising, as Dan said. Uh, this is far from over. Uh, and now is not the time to relax, uh, especially with flu season and the weather changing and everything else moving in. So uh, it's even more important now uh, than ever. So uh, once again, I'm just, Glad to be in the presence of the rest of my council members, and uh, I wish everyone uh, have a good rest of the week and weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Gary. Well, I would like to start off by saying this evening that I was able to attend uh, SEMCOG's General Assembly virtual homecoming. It's uh, normally in person, and that is, again, Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, and they put on a program for those in government that so the, we can learn more ways to work together and uh, do good things for our city. I also want to wish everyone a safe and spooky Halloween. Uh, my son's going to be at least walking at least one block as long as he can stand it in his little monkey costume. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And I also want to say a big uh, go green, go white uh, for this weekend's Michigan, Michigan State game. I know many of us, including <laughs> our very own City administrator, uh, administrator, consider it a holiday. <laughs> and I also want to encourage everyone to go out and exercise your right to vote if you haven't already voted early. Uh, definitely, it's important definitely to look all through the ballot and look at the city's three proposals and they make up our uh, new charter amendment that will support our police, fire, and always make sure our roads are in great shape. Uh, finally, I want to echo the statement of uh, my fellow councilman and councilwoman that we are in a pandemic still. We have to stay safe, wear your mask, uh, sanitize and keep distance. Don't force anyone to, uh, out of their comfort zone if they don't feel comfortable. And with that, I will see you after uh, election day and hopefully, as I'm sure everything will go, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Charles. Uh, first off, thank you for uh, everyone coming. I'm glad to be face to face always. Um, to the gentleman that spoke up about the WOW cable, I do have WOW as well, and I've uh, been going to these meetings for many years, and I totally 100% understand what you're saying. I've uh, back at the old city hall said the same exact thing, and either my volume had to go all the way to the last bar or and all that stuff, but you know, it's, uh, but we'll, we'll get, get fixed. Um, uh, one more week until the election. And it's funny to uh, say that cause how it's so eight more weeks, six more weeks. And just now we're at one more week and here we are. Um, please make sure you go out and vote. Um, uh, if you have any questions, like we said, uh, Make sure you come email us. Um, we're always open to uh, uh, answer questions. If you haven't gotten your second edition of the new Ma Allen Park Today magazine, they do have copies at City Hall. Um, if you haven't gotten it yet, um, 
I want to say a uh, great job to the volunteers on Park Avenue, Mr. Mark Bailey, and everyone that participated for putting the jack-o'-lanterns on Park Avenue and keeping that tradition going. Um, it, it just brings more festive to our city, and I want, hope we can keep stepping up more and more each year. Um, to, like our administrator said about Savoni with the cement going down on Champagne. I personally would love to keep those cones out because people don't speed down the road and all that stuff and everyone's <laughs> driving slower and <laughs> stuff. And so I, I personally, I, they, they did a great job with that. Um, uh, Halloween, please make sure, um, if, again, with driving, if, and if, we're, if you're going out to an event, make sure you're watching, drive slow in the dark, it gets, because daylight savings time that night too. Um, make sure you're watching for the trick-or-treaters. Um, I, I don't have any issues with keeping the dates for the next November, that November for Thanksgiving or December. If we change it to the weekend, the week before it is a historical commissions are those days as well. Um, and then lastly, um, with uh, green and white, I just want to say go Jags because they are in the playoffs. <laughs> And um, other than that, uh, everyone stay positive. Thank you and God bless. Tony. Okay. Oh, well, first of all, I want to thank everyone here for attending. And it's sure nice to see uh, our people together here. It's very nice. I want to thank, uh, we held a, uh, a food drive, uh, American Legion 409 last Friday, and I thought it went well. well. I want to personally thank uh, our chief police to keep our, our uh, well, you know, route moving, moving very good. I appreciate it with search involved. I want to thank the state of uh, Michigan State Police that was there, and I can't, uh, uh, and everybody else that helped, especially our mayor was there. Thank you very much, Mayor. We d they did pretty good. There was a five, was ten pellets, and it, it was slow for a while. But then we got rid of them all. They went to the veterans and all the less fortunate citizens of Belton Park, and the uh, Palooch Center. And like uh, Charlie Blevins just said, thank for Mark keeping that spirit up for Pumpkin Patch. I like that. It's very nice. At least I made it for the last night, huh? <laughs> Went there, we loaded the truck up, it was nice. And uh, hopefully the kids will have fun. There's no candy passing around, but that's okay. They're still gonna have their showmobile over there with a little music. I believe it's gonna be that way. I talked to him yesterday about it. And uh, make sure that you vote. Please go and vote. Happy. Happy Halloween and vote. It's very important this year to vote. It's important every year to vote, but especially this year. Thank you and good night. Sam? All right. Well, I'll have to ask that you guys excuse me because I, I, I do get fired up by democracy. So this is something that <laughs> I get very excited about. Yeah. So I, I've heard, and, and I, you know, I, these are, I have to say that these are anecdotal stories that I've heard. Um, about people with different national political signs on, on, on their yards and people either vandalizing them, removing them, uh, yelling things out the window. And, and one thing that I, I would just urge to our citizens is that one of the most sacred things that we have in this country, one of the things that is most dear to our founding ideals is, is the ability to express your political ideas and to do so publicly. Um, and, and, and it's, it, it, it strikes me, I, obviously I teach um, American history, I teach it, you know, 1491 to, to the present. Um, and the, the speech that Thomas Jefferson gave on his first inaugural, and if you think that this election is, is, is rough, go, go back and look at the election of 1800, look at some of the political cartoons that are in there, it's nasty. It, it, is, it, it, was a, it was a very, very contentious election with very heated people on both sides. And in Thomas Jefferson's inaugural address, he, he says that a difference of opinion is not a difference of principle. And that we, 
may have difference of opinions about you know how how an economy should run and you know maybe military spending all these different things but at the end of the day we're, we're all americans and in here we're all alan parkers everybody here and and at the end of it you know some it'll be decided we will have new president and for the most part um other than being upset when you turn on your cable news um that is really not going to affect your day-to-day -day life all that much. What happens in this building, in this room, these are the things that are affecting the day-to-day -day lives at the absolute most. Um, the decisions that are made here. Mundane decisions that may seem to be mundane about, you know, replacing concrete or um, water pumps. But those, that's the stuff that keeps your basement dry. That's the things that allows you to get to work. It's the things that keeps you safe. So um, my, my, my urging to people is, is to maybe try to look past some of these bigger things and to look at the things that bring, draw us together as a community. On that note, um, we do have a charter amendment that is um, on the ballot, uh, proposals one, two, and three. Um, I will say my, my big thing, and I think that this is absolutely important for every voter, is to educate yourself on that. Um, I think that you should do it on everything up and down the ballot, but if there are any citizens that have any questions about those proposals, reach out to somebody and ask. Okay? I, I've put myself out there as a resource. If people have questions, I'd be happy to ask them. I know our Chief of Police, Chief Egan, has, um, has said the same thing. I bet if you wandered into City Hall and you just like, you know, started yelling at somebody, they would probably give you an answer. I would, I would suggest Mr. Mizzy. You know, <laughs> no, but but in, in all seriousness, um, it, it is it is uh, it, it is a sacred responsibility that we have as citizens of the United States um, and as citizens of this community. Um, so um, be informed, make your decision, and um, just remember that there are there are bigger bigger things than political parties. Um, and uh, the the closing words that. That um, Thomas Jefferson said, who was a Democratic Republican and beat John Adams, the Federalist. He said, "We are all, we are all Democratic Republicans. We are all Federalists. All right." And I and I would, we are, at the end of the day, we're we're all Americans. We're all Alan Parkers. So go vote. Have a great Halloween. That's it. Take it down. And uh, Mr. Busy. Do you mind if I come up here? Please. Well, you take your mask off of here. Um, Councilman Lloyd is spot on with so much of, of what he said. Um, and, and all I could say is you, you're beautifully carrying the torch and not to always hold you in that light, but I deeply and highly respected your father. Okay, he always trusted in me and always, always checked in on me around election time, so. Um, thank you. But I'm um, here to talk about absentee ballots real quick. Absentee ballots are still available uh, until Monday before 4 p.m. If you come in at 4.01 p.m., by law, we cannot issue you an absentee ballot. You will hear it be called different names. I'm not going to use them, but Michigan is absentee ballot. So if you want to cast your vote, not at your precinct and here at City Hall, you're more than welcome to. Just don't try to go to the polls on election day. Okay, one of the most common things, right now we've, we've issued today over 10,000 absentee ballots. Okay, the, the only closer, closest election to that number was in 2008, we had 7,200 absentee ballots. So we blew that out of the water. Um, those of you who have not turned them in, I urge you to get them in. And I ask that you do not take them to the polls to think they're going to be counted at the polls. Okay? Your absentee ballot that you received cannot be counted at the precinct you vote at. It has to be brought back to City Hall. 
Now, if you received an absentee ballot, but wish to vote at the polls on election day, you can bring that ballot into the clerk's office as soon as possible so we could check it off that you surrendered it. Or you can take it to the polls sealed and you can write on your ballot, we're going to ask for your signature, I wish to surrender my absentee ballot. Okay, so if you, if you do want to take it into the polls, that absentee ballot won't be counted at the precinct, but you could surrender it and get a brand new ballot identical to the one you're, you're handing over, you're surrendering. Okay, um, also, um, all precincts are open. Every voting precinct that we normally vote at, and they are open from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. There is no exception to people getting there an hour early. We cannot legally let you vote. And if you walk in that door after 8.01 p.m., we cannot legally let you vote, okay? Um, Councilman Blevins has repeatedly brought up the people who worked the polls. He was one for about a decade. Yeah, that he worked, and ironically, it was precinct 10, so 10 years. There, anyways, <laughs> um, I always think election stuff. Um, remember, these people are literally family, friends, and neighbors. Okay, do they have political leanings? Yes, but only for your security as a checks and balance. We have so many people who register as Democrats and so many as Republicans, only in order to work the election do we ask that. There is a balance at every time so it's not stacked with one party or another. Um, I ask that no political apparel for anything on the ballot, okay? We've had a lot of questions, and, and that includes slogans, and I'll use the both, just the main two as an example, make America great or make, make America great again, or build back better. Those are campaign slogans, okay? Those two candidates are on the ballot. We've had questions about Black Lives Matter apparel and Blue Lives Matter apparel. Wear it all you want, because whether people agree or disagree, it's really not political and anything to do with this ballot, okay? It is not supporting a campaign or a candidate. Um, Again, I want to thank Alan Parker for breaking our numbers here. Uh, over 10,033 issued today. Um, yeah, now we only have about 7,500 back. So that's why I had to give the disclaimer of the surrendered ballots and then get them in. Um, I never like to knock the post office, but if you can, bring them into our office. We are open from now till Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We are open Saturday from 9 to 3 and Sunday 12 to 2. And we will be open all day Monday to um, accept the ballots. So um, with that, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. God bless you and good night. Word to All I can say is I suggest bringing them to me. Right, a word to the wise. Thank you very much, Mike. That's, uh, I think one of the most interesting things that you learn is um, the comment he made about having balance at your polling locations. Um, did not realize until I uh, pulled a form to uh, think about working at the polls that you did have to specify one party or the other. I, I think there's other uh, options. You couldn't be an independent, but you could be a Republican, Democrat, um, Green, par the Green part, part, the main parties. 
And, um, and in talking to Mike about that, he said that's so that they ensure that you have a proper mix at each polling station. And I found that to be quite interesting. Um, as usual, there's not much left for me to say at council comments, because um, there's nothing like repeating things. Uh, but voting is important all the time. I agree with Mr. Lally. Um, it's not only the major elections, it's everyone. And we are having some important things that are happening here with uh, our charter. And we are very hopeful that our residents have taken the time to read material that's been put out there uh, and things that have been communicated. I know I have had the opportunity to um, do some one-on-ones with some residents and present some additional information which helped to clarify. Um, back in uh, 1956, with our original charter, the city put in uh, for charter for operating expenses 12.5 mills in 1956. That's 64 years ago. Uh, the state says that we can levy as a city 20 mills. I want you to think about the fact that 64 years ago we put in for 12 and a half mills, and today, because of Headley and Proposal 1, that 12 mills that we initially put into place in 1964 for operating fund is down to 10.4926 mills. So I think hopefully people can understand why we're asking to take the charter up to the state allotted 20 mills because what we are paying for operating and for police and fire with special millages in the streets uh, only comes to 19 point some mills, which is under the 20, and we just want to hold that in reserve. But people, I hope, have I, we've communicated and communicated that that special police and fire millage now accounts for 52% of fire and police expenses and their budget, 52% of their budget. And the street accounts for 27%. And we also move money from our operating fund to street and local to help with the infrastructure that, quite frankly, I think was neglected for too long of a time. Um, I know that people will take a look at their tax bill and say, but I'm paying, paying this, I'm paying that. But take a good look at it because I took a look at mine and of the just under $3,000 that I paid in taxes for last winter and this summer, less than half of that goes to the city. The rest is collected on behalf of other entities. And I think that needs to be kept in mind. And a lot of the things that are being collected are going to go away. Uh, judgments for sewers, uh, paying off something for the community center, what we don't want to see go away is the funding for police, fire, and streets. Um, Halloween, uh, we got something from Wayne County just before uh, we walked in here, or I did from one of the Wayne County entities that sends us data and information. I will scan these and put, put these up on Facebook. Um, it's talking about stay safe on Halloween, and they're giving some tips. Um, we're not telling anybody what to do or not do. That is strictly up to the individuals, but whatever you do, take proper precautions so that you and the little ones are safe. Um, if you get an opportunity, and I hope we will post some of those too, take a look at our DPS facility. That is uh, something we should all be proud of and uh, also want to give kudos to the council and mayor who preceded us here in that they had the foresight to take advantage of the opportunity to purchase that property at a very bargain rate uh, because they were thinking ahead. They were planning. They knew that we had to do something uh, to protect the equipment that we're buying to make this a better city, to keep our roads clean and neat, uh, to keep our sewers maintained. And we've got to do something to protect those investments. Um, I know I'm probably only speaking to all of you who are in the you in the audience, but um, everyone have a good, safe weekend coming up. Um, 
and we'll see you in November. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Mr. Lally. Second. Second by Mr. Lloyd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned at 7.06 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary.